Um, in this verse, I'm going to be talking about a verse um, which doesn't really have any title, but we can call it Arunachal Ramanan, um, because that is the name that Bhagavan uses in this verse. Um, uh, this verse is always sung at the end of Arunachala uh, Stuti Panchakam. It is not one of the five, it's a separate verse, um, but it's a very fitting conclusion to the whole of Arunachala Stuti Panchakam. Um, some, there are some people, some devotees, they, they like to identify Vinyani with particular names or forms of God. Actually, Vinyani, as Bhagavan often used to say, Jnana me Jnani. Jnana itself is Vinyani. So Vinyani is nothing but Brahman itself. It is the absolute, re the, the, Brahm, it's the original reality, the fundamental reality called Brahman. That is what Vinyani actually is. Vinyani is not a, an individual god or anything. Vinyani is, is that pure awareness itself. Jnana means pure awareness. What knows pure awareness? Only pure awareness. So Vinyana so alone is Vinyani, as Bhagavan often said. So Bhagavan is actually nothing but Jnana. But some people, some devotees like to identify uh, uh, Vinyani with a particular god. So, um, from very early on, when uh, Kaviyaganta first came to Bhagavan in 2000, and, uh, sorry, in 1907, and he, um, he, very soon after coming, he started to tell his devotees that, um, that Bhagavan was an incarnation of Subramanya, the younger son of Lord Shiva. And he claimed that he himself was an incarnation of Ganapati, the elder son of Lord Shiva. Um, but he said, though, though um, I am the elder and you are the younger, I take you as my guru. Um, that was according to his devotional barber. Um, other people had other ideas. Um, some people thought the Bhagavan is uh, Shiva himself, or people had different ideas. So a devotee uh, um, called... Uh, I've forgotten his name, I've forgotten the name. So some devotee wrote a verse in Malayalam asking Bhagavan, are you, are you, um, are you uh, uh, Subramanya? He, he listed a number of gods, and are you this god or this god or this god? And he wrote it in a particular meter in, in Malayalam. Bhagavan uh, replied in Malayalam and then wrote the same verse in, uh, in Tamil because Malayalam and Tamil are very similar languages, and when Bhagavan, whenever Bhagavan writes uh, Malayalam, it's heavily Tamilized Malayalam. The, Tamil, the Malayalam verse and the Tamil verse are very, very similar. But um, obviously, because it's part of Arunachal Stuti Panchakam, which is, I mean, it's sung as a conclusion to Arunachal Stuti Panchakam, it's generally sung in Tamil. So it's a Tamil version we can take as the, more or less the main version. Um, so it's the Tamil version I'm talking about. I, I don't know exactly what the Malayalam version is. I've seen it and it's very similar to Tamil, as I say, um, the wording and everything. Um, so um, when Bhagavan had been asked whether he's this god or that god, whether, which god he is, Bhagavan uh, 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 replies in a very beautiful way. Firstly, um, he refers to himself as um, Paramat. Well, he's not even he's not even saying me. He say, he's he he. What the, the subject he talks about is Paramatman Arunachala Ramanan. Paramatman means Paramatma, the, the ultimate self, the supreme self. Um, as I explained earlier, when I was talking about the first verse of Arunachala Pancharatnam in an, in another uh, video, Paramatma literally means the ultimate self. Uh, parama is a superlative. Uh, atma means oneself. Um, but in the, the term 
Paramatma is often used to refer to God, because God actually is our own real self. But even in, in, in a more uh, dualistic part, they often refer to Arunachala, uh, to, sorry, to God as Paramatma and to the Jiva as Jivatma. So they make the distinction between Jivatma and Paramatma. According to Bhagavan, Jivatma is nothing but Paramatma. Paramatma alone is real. But anyway, he refers to here as uh, he refers to Arunachal Ramanan as Paramatman. That can either we can either understand that to mean God, or we can understand it to mean our own real nature. Um, uh, both of which are applicable because both uh, mean actually the same thing. Um, Bhagavan calls himself Arunachal Ramana. That is, he doesn't take Ramana to be something other than Arunachala. Arunachala and Ramana are one. So what he says in this verse, in answer to this question, he says, in the first sentence, in the first two lines, which is one sentence, he says, um, I'll first read the whole verse and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, explain the first two lines first. Ariyati tarajivara dahavari jaguhail arivairami paramatuman arunachala ramanan parivalula muruhanala paranandiru guheyandu uh, Arivam Viri Tiravani Jum Arivai Adugaliam. The Bhagavan's written it so beautifully. Um, the, the, the first two lines Ariyati Tarajivara Dahavari Jaguhail Arivai Rami Paramatuman Arunachala Ramana. What that means is um, uh, Arunachala Ramana is Paramatman. Uh, the ultimate self or the supreme spirit or God or whatever you say. There is the Paramatman. Uh, Arivai Rami uh, Arivai means rejoicing as awareness or reveling as awareness. Rami means uh, being blissfully existing as Arivu. Arivu means awareness. Here Bhagavan is referring to pure awareness. Uh, uh, rejoicing as pure awareness. Um, and then the, that's the second line. So it's more or less we're working for, if we, um, if we translate this sentence into English, the subject, in Tamil, the subject has come at the end, and then we, so we have to work our way backwards. So Arunachal Ramana is the Paramatma uh, rejoicing in the heart as awareness. Rejoicing as awareness, uh, then comes the first line. Ariyati Tarajivara Dahavari Jagohail. Ariyadi means uh, beginning with Hari, beginning with Vishnu. Uh, Ittara Jiva, uh, all, all other Jivas. So, be, so with all Jivas, beginning with Hari, Jivas means sentient beings. So all sentient beings from the highest god Vishnu uh, downwards. Um, Ariyati Ittara Jiva Radu, Ahavarija Guhail. In the, in the cave of the Ahavari. Aha Varija, uh, Varija is a uh, lotus, and uh, Aha means eye or heart or inside, so the heart lotus. Uh, so in the cape of the heart lotus of all uh, uh, sentient beings, beginning with Hari, uh, Arunachal Ramana is that which is uh, shining in the heart lotus, in the, in the cave of the heart, as uh, as uh, is, is the Paramatma, which is always rejoicing as awareness in the cave of the heart of all uh, uh, living, all sentient beings, beginning with Hari. So the, the whole sentence we can say is, Arunachya Ramana is the Paramatman rejoicing as awareness in the cave of the heart lotus of all uh, different, all different, okay, Itra we can take as Abha, we can also take as different, all the diverse different jivas, beginning with Hari. Um, so, uh, indirectly what Bhagavan is saying here, he's not this god or that god, he's not Subramanya or Shiva, he is that ultimate reality, that Paramatma, which is uh, existing blissfully as awareness in the heart of all sentient beings. So, that is, he, he reveals there what his, his real nature is. Arunachala Ramanan, Arunachala and Ramana are one and the same. They are that which is always, uh, they are the Paramatma which is always shining, in the, always shining blissfully in the cave of our heart of all of us as pure awareness. So, 
how to know this? How to know this? Uh, Bhagavan, Bhagavan never asks us to believe anything. Uh, he, he tells us things, but then he wants us to, to find out for ourselves, to verify the truth of what he said. So how do we verify the truth of this? He gives the answer in the next two lines. Um, uh, parival ulam. Uh, but, uh, well, what the next two lines, the next two lines are parival ulam uruha. Uh, with, that means with uh, the heart melting by love. Um, uh, or melting with, uh, by love, it literally it means, in English we would say with love. Heart melting with love. Nal paran andida guhe andu. That means um, reaching or merging in the cave where the supreme, where the sublime supreme dwell, dwells. Nala means, literally means good, but in this context we can take it as sublime, the exalted or the um, the, the, uh, the Nal Paran, Paran is the supreme reality, that's the Paramatman he's referring to in the previous verse, which exists in the heart. So, um, the Nal Paran Andira Guhe uh, Andu, that is uh, a, um, reaching or merging in the cave uh, where the sublime uh, supreme, supreme dwells. Um, uh, Arivam viri uh, tirava, the eye that is awareness opening, that is the eye of jnana, the, the eye that is pure awareness opening. Nijam uh, um, arivai, uh, you will know the, uh, you will know nijam in, uh, in, um, in, in, um, in Tamil, uh, sorry, in Sanskrit nijam means what is natural, what is, uh, what is real. Uh, but but in, in Tamil it's particularly, means, uh, it's particularly used in the sense of the truth or the reality. You will know this reality. Um, what does he mean by the, the eye of which his awareness will open? That is, the, uh, when, we t when, when, we, when our heart melts with love and we reach the cave of the heart, that is, when we merge into the cave of the heart, where Aranacha Ramana exists blissfully as pure awareness, we will merge in that and thereby our eye of pure awareness will be opened. That is, we will shed the ego. The ego is what covers the eye of pure awareness. So why is that? how is the eye of pure awareness closed? It's never completely closed. We're always aware of ourselves as I am, but it's seemingly uh, covered by our wrong awareness of ourselves as I am this body, I am this person. So when that, when that ego, the false awareness, I am this person, is, is shed, the eye of awareness is open, and then we will know this truth. Um, why, how will we know this truth? Uh, adu veli am. It will reveal, it, uh, veli means outside, am means uh, it will be outside. It will, it, will it, uh, it will reveal itself. That is, when we turn within, and uh, enter the cave and merge into our natural, our eye of awareness will be opened and the truth will then be revealed. We will know the truth because it will reveal itself. That is, pure awareness will reveal itself. To whom? It will reveal itself only to pure awareness. So only when our eye of pure awareness is open will we be aware of ourselves as pure awareness. But what is the key here? How are we to enter the heart? Bhagavan says, Parival Parival ulum uruha, with the heart melting with love. That is, we cannot, we cannot succeed in this path of self-investigation, of turning our mind within to know ourselves. We cannot succeed without our heart melting with love, without having such overwhelming love, all-consuming love for him, but we are ready to surrender ourselves to him, but we are ready to melt and become one with him. In verse 101 of Arunachakshramlai, Bhagavan uses a beautiful analogy. He says, Ambu vilali pol, amburu vanilene, ambai karitaral Arunachala. That means, like ice in water, lovingly melt me as love in you, the form of love. So, without melting in Arunachala as love, um, we cannot know our natural as it is. So without, without our heart melting with love, we cannot enter the cave and thereby um, merge uh, 
in, uh, we can we can enter emerge enter and merge into the cave, um, and thereby have our eye of awareness of pure awareness opened. So uh, the, the the key is love. The key. Bhagavan often used to say, Bhakti is the mother of jnana. So the key to success in the path of, uh, of vichara is love. Um, the, the pinnacle of the path of bhakti is surrender, because surrender, only when we give ourselves, is our love. When, uh, love is full only when we are willing to give ourselves entirely to the one we love. So we will be willing to surrender ourselves entirely to Bhagavan only uh, uh, when, when, we have, when our love for him is full. So the, the pinnacle of the path of bhakti is surrender. And the pinnacle of surrender is uh, vichara, because we cannot, we cannot surrender ourselves without investigating ourselves. That is, without turning our attention within, we cannot surrender ourselves, because the self that we are to surrender is ego. And ego is nothing but a false awareness of ourselves. So we cannot give up that false awareness of ourself without being aware of ourself as we actually are. That is, being aware of ourself as we actually are is the means by which we can give up ego. But in order to give up ego, we have to have such all-consuming love. We have to have such uh, uh, love for nothing other than... Uh, that is, total all-consuming love. Love to such an extent that we are ready to give ourselves wholly to him. So it is only when the heart is melting with love with him that we will be able to enter and merge into the cave. The term that Bhagavan used is uh, and for, uh, for is andu, which means becoming full, spreading over, being satisfied, abiding, staying, eating, combining with. So that when he says guhe andu, he means merging in and being fully, fully satisfied with and uh, 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 with that cave, that is, uh, that cave is the heart in which Arunachal is always shining as pure awareness, in which Arunachal Ramana is always shining as pure awareness. So only when our heart is melting with love for him will we be able to surrender ourselves entirely to him and become one with him. Thereby, our becoming one with him is what he describes here as the opening of our, uh, of our eye of awareness. And when the eye of awareness is opened, we will then know this truth. And because the truth will reveal itself, because the truth is that eye of awareness. So um, this verse is very important because Bhagavan is going beyond all this uh, identification. The only form of God that Bhagavan identifies himself with is Arunachala. He refers to himself as Arunachala. Arunachala and Bhagavan are one. What, what is special about the form of Arunachala? Arunachala the, the why does God appear in the form of, of a hill as Arunachala? That this particular manifestation of God has one purpose and one purpose alone. Arunachala mena ahmeinine pava ahateva rarupai Arunachala. Arunachala, you root out the ego of those who meditate on you in my heart as I. That is, ahame there can mean in my heart, it can also mean as I. Those who, who know, who, those who, who meditate on Arunachala, who meditate on Arunachala as I, or who, who, those who think that Arunachala is I, we can take it that way, there are various ways we can take that verse. And there's another verse in, um, which we can also talk about here, which is also a very important verse, um, that Bhagavan once wrote under a picture of Arunachala, and it's always printed under the, and every picture of Arunachala in his collective works in Tamil. And it, he also, at the back here, he's written the same verse. Um, he, he, Bhagavan himself drew this picture of Arunachala and wrote this verse underneath it. What he says in this verse is, Karuna Nabamai Karudakkatinal Harunachala Shiva Midam. What that means is, this, he's referring to Arunachala, this is Arunachala Shiva. Uh, which bestows liberation when thought of as the ocean of karuna. Uh, 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 karuna nabha means the ocean of, of, of grace, the ocean of uh, compassion. When we, when we, or, 
or we can take the, we can take the thought of as as the ocean of compassion. A better way of taking it is I. We can take it as we can also take it as being. This is our natural shiva, which being the ocean of compassion bestows liberation when thought of. So the mere thought of Aranatcha will bestow liberation because Aranatcha is the ocean of compassion. And what does liber bestowing liberation mean? As Bhagavan says in the last verse of Uludunapadu, um, he Bhagavan defines what is mukti. Uh, in the last verse of Uludunapadu, there's people, there's so many different conceptions people have of mukti. But in the state of mukti, you'll be with form or you'll be without form, or you can either be with form or without form. Uh, Bhagavan says, if it is said that the liberation one can attain is of three kinds, with form, without form, or with or without form, I will say, um, uh, uh, um, the, the, the ego, the, the destruction of the ego form, which dis distinguishes liberation with form, without form, or with or without form, the destruction of that ego form is mukti, that is ahande uruvam, uh, ahande uru uh, aridal mukti, that is destruction of ego alone is mukti. So when Bhagavan says that uh, Arunachala bestows mukti, he means it destroys ego. So the form of Arunachala is, a, that is, it, Arunachala is a unique form of God. Other forms of God, Ganapati will remove your obstacles, uh, sar uh, Sar uh, Lakshmi will give wealth, Saraswati will give uh, learning, but what will Arunachala give? Arunachala will, <laughs> will <laughs> destroy the ego. As he says in another verse in, um, in Aksramunle, um, uh, 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 Kodi Tadeyara Kollu Nekati Kondeng and Bhavan Arunachala. Arunachala, how can I survive after embracing you who have hoisted your flag to declare yourself as the killer of your devotees? So Arunachala is the... Is, is the, the why Bhagavan identifies himself with Arunachala? Because Bhagavan has come only to destroy the ego. And Arunachala is manifested in the form of a hill and in the form of Bhagavan only to destroy our ego. So he... Having come to our natural, we cannot survive. Having come to Bhagavan, we cannot survive because he's hoisted his flag. In old days, when a philanthropist wanted to give, um, to feed people or to give money or whatever, he would hoist a flag to say that he, on such and such a day, he's going to give such and such a, um, charity to people. So our natural has hoisted his flag to say he will, anyone who comes to him, he will kill him. So that is our natural Ramana. So how will we be killed? We must turn, we, with our heart melting with love, we must turn within and merge back into him. So um, Bhagavan doesn't identify himself with any god other than our natural, because our, Bhagavan is the Paramatma, the supreme, is our own real nature, the supreme self that is always shining in our heart as I. As he says in the second verse of our natural Pancharatnam, you're always, you are always dancing in the heart as I, as our own self. So that is Bhagavan. So he's nothing other than our own real nature. And if we uh, to know him, we have to, our, our heart has to melt with love, we have to turn within and merge in him with heart-melting love.